I am Vinny from Guitar Guitar and I'm currently standing in the middle of a very open and busy Guitar Guitar Epsom. So let's see how this video goes. This is a brand new series which we're bringing to our channel. This is our Vintage Vault. Basically, you know, we sell a lot of new guitars, lots of pre-owned guitars, and sometimes we get some very interesting vintage guitars which are definitely worth talking about and we're going to start it off with this guitar this is a fender rhinestone strat and it has a very very interesting story and it's definitely one worth telling so let's get stuck into it the first thing you need to know about this guitar is that it was designed in 1975 by a man called John Douglas, who was a British sculptor who was active around the 70s and was very famous for his cold cast bronze sculpture work. So the idea for this guitar was first conceived when John visited the famous Sound City Music Shop in Soho, which was at the time owned by Ivor Arbiter. Ivor Arbiter was the then head distributor of Fender in the UK. So basically anything that came in and out of the UK, which was a Fender, was sold by him. Um, if you don't know who he is, you should look him up. He's a very interesting man. He also designed the Beatles logo, which ended up on that famous Ludwig kick drum skin. So a whole load of other stories there. But basically John walked into this shop and he basically said to Ivor, um, they all look really boring and I don't like any of these guitars and basically John was challenged to make something a little bit more interesting. John decided to base his design around a Stratocaster body. He used cold cast bronze, which is basically a process where you take like, I think it's like a fiberglass material and then you just have like some very, very light bronze on the top. Uh, makes it very easy to kind of sculpt. Um, and he came up with this kind of design here. It's almost like a little floral pattern. It's quite important, obviously, for this to be fairly light because it is a guitar and it doesn't need to be played. And you don't want the full weight of bronze just strapped around your shoulder, obviously. So it's very light, actually lighter than a lot of wood guitars that I've played, which is quite impressive, really. John then showed the prototype of the rhinestone strat to Ivor, who basically said, you should put some rhinestones in it, which he did, and that's why it's called the Rhinestone Stratocaster. John went on to create six of the original rhinestone guitars, which were put on display in Fender's Soundhouse store in the UK. All of the guitar specs kind of align with your standard CBS era 70 Strat, so you've got your big headstock, you've got your micro tilt, neck join, etc., etc. Basically, it's a 70 Strat with a very interesting body. Unfortunately, not long after those six guitars were put on sale, there was a fire in the store, which basically destroyed pretty much all of the guitars in the shop, including four of the Rhinestone Stratocasters. Only two were sold before the fire. So of the original six, only two exist to this day. And as far as I can tell, no one really has any idea where they are. If I'm wrong about that and you know where they might be, please let us know in the comments.
Fast forward a few years to 1989 and a guitar collector approached John because he wanted to commission one of these for himself. It turned out to make the mold for the body and basically recreate these. It would cost the same amount to make one guitar body that it would to make 25. So John decided that he was going to do a run of 50 and basically use the old mold, uh, make a couple small changes to the body and basically sell them on. John set out to make the first 25 of the 50 that he planned using parts from different 70s Stratocasters and some Stratocasters with more modern specs of the time. So every single one of these that you see on the market will generally have a different look in the neck, a different look on the pit guard, different electronics. Every single one is slightly different. I've seen some with rosewood fingerboards. I've seen some with black pit guards. There are quite a few different variations of these guitars. The second batch of rhinestone Stratocasters all come with a very distinctive seal or plaque of authenticity in the back of the body. And it also has John's signature plus the year that this was originally designed, 1975, just etched in above the input jack. On the seal itself, all of these guitars are numbered out of 50. This particular model is number 17, which I will talk about a little bit more in detail in a second. One important thing to note about these guitars is that although they are numbered out of 50, there was only ever 25 of these reissues made. The reason for that is that John Douglas unfortunately passed away after he made the first 25, which is of course very sad. As you can imagine, if there was only 50 pieces of these, they'd still be pretty rare guitars. The fact that there is only 25 of them with such an interesting story makes these extremely rare pieces. And it's such a privilege to be able to just see one up close and just see what they're all about and learn so much about these guitars because they do genuinely just have such a rich history. So as I already mentioned, this particular model in my hand is number 17 out of the 25 that were made. So number 17 has been made out of a 79 Stratocasters parts. So you've got that distinctive 70s Strat, big chunky headstock. Um, you can see on the serial number here that it is a 79 Strat um, from the S and the 9, which is obviously CBS era. And we actually did open up this guitar and have a look on the electronics inside and the pickups and the pick guard and everything are also stamped with the same serial number and year. So all of this matches up. The only thing that would have been changed would have been the body, which was of course replaced with John's famous rhinestone design. Of course, one of the driving factors to putting 70s parts on these guitars is to make them feel as close to the original six rhinestone Stratocasters, which were designed in 1975. One thing to note about this particular guitar is that they've used a really nice bird's eye maple to make this neck. It's actually got like a really nice feel to the neck and it just looks great. So it just so happens that this particular one just looks really really good and everything is in really good condition too which is really nice considering that this guitar is probably at least 30 odd years old. Now admittedly the design on this guitar is a little bit marmite. Some people absolutely love the look of it, some people are not so sure. Um, what's really interesting about this strap is just how different it is to anything else you can get. I mean, if you were to get any other strap from that sort of period, it would probably be like a natural or black finish. Um, to have something with so much detailing and just such an interesting look and feel to it, it makes this guitar so special. And that's about all we have time for for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you find our new Vintage Vault series interesting, please let us know in the comments below. If you have any other particular guitars you'd like us to talk about, do also please let us know in the comments below. As I said at the beginning of the video, I am in the Guitar Guitar Epsom store. Um, we have six stores across the country with lots of helpful sales staff who are always willing to answer any questions you may have. Like these guys um, who are all really, really annoying and made this video really hard to make. <laughs> if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Bye.